In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint car parts. Today we'll be painting a lip spoiler for a BMW E46 that we purchased from Mars Performance in Melbourne, Australia. Be careful when buying lip spoilers or other parts on eBay. We purchased three spoilers before this one that didn't fit. This spoiler comes pre-primed, but I'm going to prime it again anyway, for peace of mind and to show you how it's done. Make sure you trial fit all parts before you paint them, and also keep in mind if you'll be painting bare metal, you'll need special materials for this such as an etch primer. This part is plastic, so we won't need anything too fancy. Alright, I'm just going to show you what we're going to be using for our job today. The first thing here is some primer. This is Flexi Primer. It's made for plastic. Uh, it is clear. Um, I wish it was grey, but it's clear. And uh, then we have our actual colour here. This is the base coat, so this is the black. And then we have our clear coat right here. Um, Keep in mind, you're going to need to find out what kind of paint is on your car before you do this. If you have acrylic, uh, it will be different paint and you probably will be using a different primer. But the car we're painting, it is a two-pack color, so we'll be using uh, our base coat, which will go on quite matte, and then the clear coat will give it that shine that we're after. Uh, you'll also need some wax and grease remover, which is called Prepsol or Preparation Solvent. This just take, cleans the parts be between, um, cleans the parts before we apply any paint or primer and anything like that. It's good stuff. Uh, you'll also need some masking tape, depending on what you're painting. You might need to mask up some areas around what you're painting. Uh, I don't really need this because all we're painting is a spoiler and it's off the car. You'll also need some clean rags uh, to wipe down the parts. Try and get rags that don't leave like cotton balls and things behind because that can make it a real pain. And you'll probably also need some sandpaper. Right here we've got some 800 grit and it's waterproof. So we'll be wet sanding all our parts today. If the part you have is used or needs repairing, you might have to get some higher grade or some harsher sandpaper to actually take out any imperfections in your panel before you start painting. Uh, but this is basically just a video on how to paint parts with, as if they're brand new or they've already been repaired. Normally for big jobs, you'd want to be using actual spray gun with a compressor because um, you do get a much better finish. But this is only a very small part on the car. So spray cans or pressure packs, as they're also known, is perfect for the job. So make sure you have safety gear and adequate ventilation because this stuff is dangerous. Most paint shops should be able to mix your correct paint into a spray can using your paint code which is usually found somewhere under your bonnet or hood. Some shops will even match the paint to a part on your car to make sure it is exact, like your fuel lid or some other panel near the one being painted. Being that this job is so small, I just gave the shop the paint code and they mixed the paint to that code. And make sure you move everything out of the way that you don't want overspray on. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna be doing is sanding our spoiler. So all I need to do is rip off a little bit of sandpaper, dip it in my water, and start sanding down the spoiler smoothly. Uh, keep in mind, try not to sand with your finger pushing into the sandpaper like that, because um, you will you can create gouges in the existing paint or in the actual panel. Um, so that's it, I'm about to get started with my sanding. So when you're sanding down things like plastic, there is something else you can use called Scotch-Brite, which is like a rough sponge, and also you can use this paste with it. And it pretty much does a similar job to uh, wet sandpaper. Um, but it is better for parts that are bare plastic. Now, because this was pre-primed, um, I did say in my vo voiceover earlier that I'll still be priming this again just to show you guys how it's done and just for a bit of peace of mind. I don't know what primer they've used or anything like that, so I just want to rub back some of their primer and put my own on. Um, but if this was bare plastic, I'd be doing the same process. And basically what you want to do when you're sanding is you want to keep sanding until the finish is matte. So when you look at it in the light, there shouldn't be much of a shine, it should be really dull. And that means your next layer of paint or primer will probably stick pretty well. And make sure you even sand all in the parts that you don't even think you're gonna be painting. Like underneath here, I've sanded all of this because what's gonna happen? There is gonna be paint that ends up going underneath. You don't see this once it's on the car, but there will be paint that'll end up going underneath. And if that doesn't bond properly, um, it will start to peel. And obviously the paint on the top, the nice part is gonna end up being a one big layer. So once that starts to peel, it'll start peeling off the, the part you see as well. So make sure you prep the whole part nicely and uh, that's it. By sanding our parts, it provides a rougher texture for our primer to stick to and will also clean the part of any contaminants. After I wet sand the parts, I'll then be giving them a wipe down with Prepsol. Prepsol is known as wax and grease remover or preparation solvent. It is designed to remove all waxes, greases and other contaminants off the parts. 
All right, so once you're happy with the sanding down that you've done, you're now ready for primer. So this primer here is a clear primer, which is a little bit annoying. It's best if you can get a primer that's closer to the car color. So this is gonna be black. A gray primer probably would have been a good idea, um, but it's gray already, But so the clear, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, a good idea as well is to just shake your can and just spray it onto something, just to see if the nozzle's functioning properly before you actually apply any paint to the part. Before you apply any primer or paint, make sure you shake your cans like they owe you money. Okay, so now I'm ready to start applying my primer. Make sure the part is still clean from the prep soil we did earlier. If not, you can prep soil it again. Make sure it's nice and dry before you start applying your primer. And now's the time to mask up any areas where you don't want primer to be. Uh, this is off the car, so there's nothing I'm gonna be masking up. I might just make up some balls out of masking tape, just to sit the spoiler off the piece of cardboard I've got it sitting on, and then I'm ready to start priming. All right, so a little bit of a last minute change of plans. I've decided to hang this. Um, it's just gonna be much easier to get coverage all over it. And it was getting a little bit too hard to balance, kept moving back and forward. So I'm gonna hang it and I'm just gonna paint it like that. Make sure to paint in a ventilated area and wear some appropriate safety gear. It is always best to paint somewhere where there is no wind that could blow dirt or dust onto your parts. For your first coat of primer, make it a light coat that will provide the next coat with something to stick to. I would recommend two to three coats of primer. Make sure you spray the part evenly and in long strokes and try not to concentrate the spray in one area for too long or you will get runs. And nobody likes a case of the runs. Another great tip is to make sure you paint the areas you don't see as much first. This ensures that the part you see most of has the best finish with no overspray. Okay, so I've just finished putting on my last coat of primer and once that dries, we'll be ready to give it another wet sand and then we'll be ready for our base coat. So, one thing to remember, in between each coat, make sure you give it plenty of time to dry um, before you put on your next coat. And another little quick tip I thought I'd share is if you're painting things close to the ground, which we're not, but if you are, it helps to wet the ground around the area you'll be painting. So if you're using a spray gun or like more so a spray gun from a compressor or a spray can, the air that comes out with the actual like primer or whatever it is, the air that comes out can blow dirt off the ground onto your panel and it's just gonna ruin the job. So it does help to wet the floor and that keeps the dirt on dust and anything like that trapped on under the water. So that's another good tip. Like I said, once this is completely dry, we're giving it another wet sand and we'll be ready for our base coat. Another little tip is to use some sort of fan heater um, to make your paint dry faster, but just be careful that it's not blowing any dirt or dust onto your part. The primer is now dry and I can start wet sanding it down just like we did before with our 800 grit sandpaper. Sanding our primer will get rid of any bumps and also allow our base coat to stick. Alright, once our primer has been sanded, we can now prep soil it again and we'll be ready for our base coat. Uh, now keep in mind, when you're putting on your base coat, this is the time where you need to be really careful because we won't be sanding, we won't be doing any further sanding on the panel. If you get any runs or anything in your base coat, it's going to make it very hard to fix. So try and put your base coat on nice and light. Don't get any runs uh, because straight after we apply the base coat, within about half an hour after that dries, uh, we'll be applying our clear coat. So right now, we're going to apply our base coat, which is the black. Uh, like I said, because we're painting this in a two-pack procedure, after the base coat, we'll be putting on some clear coat. Apply your base coat in nice even layers and once again, try to avoid any runs in your paint. It is difficult to remove runs at this part of the process, so try to be as careful as you can. I would recommend about two to three coats of base coat. All right, so now that we've finished base coating, within about 20 to 30 minutes, we can apply our clear coat. You won't need to do any sanding or prep soling in between now and then, unless you've got some runs that you need to fix up by sanding out, or unless you've got dirt on the panel, um, then you might need to give it a final prep sole before you're ready for clear. Um, but yeah, just gonna wait a little bit longer then I can start applying a clear coat. Okay, so now I'm ready to start the clear coat process and this is a 2K high gloss clear coat. And to what 2K means is there's basically two parts to it. So we have the clear coat and inside this can is also a hardener. 
Uh, now to stop the hardener going off all the cans sitting on the shelf and while you're not using it, you actually have to break the seal to activate it. So what we're going to be doing, there's a little thing at the bottom here, we're going to take this red thing off the top, pierce the bottom, and then we're going to have to start spraying pretty quickly. Um, within probably like half an hour, 40 minutes, you won't be able to use the can ever again, so make sure you finish what you need to do. And that's it, let's start clearing. So I've just finished putting on my last coat of clear coat and we're going to leave that overnight so possibly for about 12 hours. Uh, give, it a, give it plenty of time to harden so then we can actually start fitting it on the car without damaging paint if it's still wet. So yeah, uh, hopefully tomorrow the car will be here and I'll be able to fit the spoiler. Once the clear coat has had ample time to dry, you can now fit your part. If there is any defects in your clear coat, you can wet sand these out and use some cutting compound which is like a polish to remove any sanding marks or hazing. All right, that's it. It came up pretty damn awesome. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, what I might do is, it's my sister's car, so I told her maybe in a week's time to come back over, and I might just wet three, wet sand 3000 grit, uh, the spoiler, then polish it back up just to get rid of some of the orange peel. Um, for those of you who don't know what orange peel is, it's just like, it's like, basically it looks like orange peel and it's the texture in the paint. Um, I noticed that European cars usually have a lot of orange peel anyway and it does look pretty factory but I wouldn't mind just getting it that little bit smoother so I might even do that. I might not. She's really happy with it. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. And um, yeah, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions at all about the process, let me know in the comments below. Um, I know the dust mask thing I was, I was wearing, it, it's not really going to do much with paint fumes but what I was doing is every time I'd lay on a coat, I would open the garage door and I would actually leave the garage until like I'd wait like 10 minutes for the for the fumes to die down before I came back out and did another coat. So I mean I wasn't going to invest in a huge respirator or anything like that just for a one-off small job like this. I don't paint things that often so um, yeah I'm really happy. I hope it helped you guys. Uh, please subscribe and I'll see you soon.